So schools in England want to make sure the quality of teaching appears to be very good to Ofsted. So they constantly monitor and inspect you, criticize you, and relentlessly force feed you feedback. I will never forget how worthless that made me feel. But in England, schools couldn't care less how their teachers feel. But if your books look pretty, that's all that matters. And I can prove it by posing a hypothetical question to every member of the senior leadership. What is going to surprise some of you is that chronic Ofsted pandering makes up maybe 30% of the reason I quit teaching in England for good. The main reason I left teaching, contributing 70% to my decision to never teach in England again, is because of... Hello and welcome to episode two of my four-part series on why you should never teach in England. My name is Mustafa Fa'il and I taught high school geography for eight years across four countries. On the 15th of December 2023, I quit teaching in England forever and experienced Nirvana. I felt a joy so pure I didn't know humans were even capable of feeling that much tranquility. Why, you may wonder? Was teaching in England that traumatizing? Let's just say I'd rather jump off a cliff and get eaten by sharks than teach in England again. But there's a very good reason why teachers are quitting in their droves, and it's not just because we're paid awfully. This four-part series is me ringing the warning bell to international teachers, so you can be spared from the trauma teaching this country will give you. Think of this series as the alarm, and this as the snooze bomb. It's not all bad. You'll find many teachers in England love what they do, and in fact, many other countries also have problems, so there is no reason to make such warnings. Everything is fine. International teachers should be encouraged and feel welcome to make the move. To help me, I'll be using the same in-text reference system I used in my two documentaries. One is a three-part documentary on the COVID pandemic, and the other is on the climate crisis. Link in the description. Here's how it works. I'll show you a source. For example, this 2024 article from The Guardian titled... Teacher's mental health crisis prompts calls for suicide prevention strategy. One teacher from Fife told the conference that she had had suicidal thoughts after starting out of school with challenging pupil behavior. I've been in a very dark place in these last few months, to the point where I have repeatedly thought of suicide, she said. I have also thought about leaving a career of 20 years. Yeah, it's that bad. But none of these articles will surprise you by the end of this series. Hopefully you noticed the number in the top right corner as I showed that source. If you want to do your own research about anything I've said, all you need to do is go to the description, click the link that corresponds with the number on the screen, and just like that, you'll have access to my sources. I'll be using this in-text reference system so you can investigate my claims as I make them, and so you can realize that the case I'm presenting here is not subjective. My experience will be the same as your experience. It'll happen to you. The reasons why I left teaching in England is shared by thousands of teachers fleeing the profession each year. Ultimately, I want you to have a well-informed and honest insight before making any reckless decisions like teaching in England. Ooh. Brother, ooh. Now, this series will be broken into four parts. The first three parts are reasons why you should avoid teaching in England like the plague with the first two being specific to teachers and the third a general reason. And the fourth is my suggested solution to the problems raised in episode one to three. In a nutshell, episode one covers Ofsted, the watchdog group that oversees all the schools in England. This organization is clueless about education and yet has so much power and influence they can limit funding, fire senior staff, and obliterate reputations in as little as one to two words. They claim their reports help parents decide which school to send their kids to. But the truth is, they offer worthless school reports that are unreliable and sometimes outright fraudulent. If you haven't seen episode one yet, please do. I'll be making references to it throughout, and much of the context of this video will be lost on you if you haven't seen it. I'll put a link in the description. Now, as inferred in episode one, my decision to quit teaching can be broken down into two main reasons, with Ofsted's stranglehold being responsible for just 30% of the reason I decided to quit teaching in England for good. So the question now is, what makes up the remaining 70%? Well, the main reason I left teaching in England, accounting for 70% of my decision, is because of the English people. I'm willing to bet that you've probably got this fairy tale impression that the English are polite, elegant, and courteous gentlemen and gentlewomen, with refined taste and sophisticated routines and schedules. And English schools are a testament to the wonders of what students who champion discipline, respect, tradition, and etiquette can achieve. Nothing could be further from the truth. Here's what the English are really like.
as you will see now. So, what do you do for a living? I'm, I'm a teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell, open your book. Quick starter for you. What is six squared? What is four to the power of three? What is five to the power of four? What's the root of 49? <laughs> that was almost perfect! Like me! Excuse me! Jake swore at me, so I said, can you stop swearing at me? And he said no. Then he started to hit me with a box, so I said, stop please. And he said no. He then he chucked the masking tape at me in the face, so I chucked it at him. And then the bell rang. I started to go to lesson. He pushed me over, so I pushed him over. He started to punch me. He pushed me, and I pushed him. I pushed him to the floor, and I punched him seven times in the face. This young man, sir, is turning into a violent sociopath and is pleased with his violence towards another student. And he himself has written seven punches in the face. Shut up! Can I just tell you what we've just done? You haven't got a pen. Look. You got a pen? You scratch yourself nine, nine times when you stink on Why would you want it, to do that? And it starts to peel. Why would I you want know. to take your skin off? Oh, miss, I think I left my ruler in either French or science. Can you come out and you return then? No, we'll keep down. Are you interrupting me, girl? Oh, See? That's how I know it. Yeah, do you like it? Boo! That's disgusting. I'm not saying he should grab you or even touch you. He shouldn't do that. But to respond in biting. Yeah, I don't have all the numbers at bottom. What? I don't have all the numbers at bottom. These ones here? Yeah. Well, they're letters, not numbers. Save <laughs> it. Oh, I hate school! <laughs> I'm not sure. I want you to find some information about Romy that you can write down, please. So you've done probably about five minutes work, so it's not enough, so you need to do more. Okay? Read that and write it down. I want to see the pen in your hand and doing it. So everyone else all right? Neglect it, I've neglected it a lot. Dominic, perhaps you'd like to tell me what you're doing with that chair? Vincent. You are out of our control, Jeff, not, that's the You issue. just can't handle it. But we shouldn't have to handle it. You should, because you're a school. Okay, Jeb, just pull your head up a bit, please, and take a breath. Go away. Giggity, 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 goo. Stop saying giggity, goo. And so he went out a door, turned down, popped his head out the door, and went, giggity, goo! Through the door, I deliberately ignored yeah. her. We're going to try and do a little bit of an exam question every time. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me! Can you move out of my way? Can you move? Can you move? Can you move? Can you move? You are not sitting properly on the chair. If you do not sit with all four legs on the floor, I will take the chair away from you. I'll sit on the floor. I'm bothering Sam Hatcher Staines walked past me on D stairs and said, Keep on bullshitting and I'll kick your head in. I replied, You keep on, I'll get my family on you. He had started to walk away but then turned and pushed me hard using both hands into the wall. Miss Roberts stood between us. And to quote Sam Hatcher Staines, that is what happened. And if Miss Roberts hadn't been there, he'd have beaten the shit out of him right there and then. If I hear anything from anyone, we will act on it and we will take you out of lessons and put you somewhere where we will have to keep an eye on you until you stop threatening. <laughs> Go my office. Go my office. It's just nonsense, isn't it? It's just nonsense. You're not man enough to do it from a distance. You come and stand there. Six hundred and get my green pen. Ah, you're moving the table. What? Who are you to put your hands up in my face? Don't put check on my name because this girl's pissing me off. Tony, leave please. We're gonna have seven now, Megan. Yeah, obviously, I know that, don't I? Well, what are we down here for? Oh, go away! Go away! Come on, let's go. Go away! No! No! Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No! No! Mm -mm. No! 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 No!
The most unrealistic part of Harry Potter isn't the magic or the monsters or the potions. It's that their classrooms can be full of young English people and not be utter chaos. So don't be surprised when reading articles like this. English pupils are among the worst behaved in the world. Even top rated schools are blighted by classroom chaos, study says. Professor Terry Hayden, an education expert at the University of East Anglia, cited international evidence that teachers in England face more difficult pupil behaviour than in many rival nations. Professor Hayden suggests that poor behaviour may partly explain the superior performances of countries such as China and Japan in international school tests. Testimonies from teachers paint a disturbing picture of behaviour in some schools. One said, It is a condition of working at this school that you have to face serious disruption on a daily basis. People screaming obscenities, refusing to comply with the request to stop appalling behaviour. Threatening, spitting, swearing. Please note, this article is from 2014, 10 years ago. Ask any teacher in England who has been educating for over 10 years whether or not behaviour in schools has gotten better or worse since 2014. And virtually everyone will tell you the behaviour has got substantially worse. So, if you want to move to England and teach here because you think you'll have students that are gentle, kind and pleasant people, you are sorely mistaken. You might get that impression walking down the streets in Canterbury or other touristy areas. But the moment the environment resembles a school, then you'll know that I'm right about English people. The fact that extreme disruptions and struggles that occurred daily in England disappeared the moment I left England is extremely apparent. In England, schools lose a quarter of lesson time to poor behaviour. This equates to almost nine weeks. I've personally never seen anything like it. For some context to this, I started my career teaching history, geography and English in Australia. I taught in two schools in Perth, Western Australia, but due to Australia having a teaching surplus at the time, it was difficult to find any teaching jobs in Western Australia, since teachers would land a job and basically stay in that position until their retirement. So in 2019, I looked abroad and got a job teaching geography in Christchurch, New Zealand. After spending a year in New Zealand's South Island, I moved to the UK and taught in Essex, thinking, like most who have never been to England, that it would be a pleasant, well-mannered experience like the other two countries I taught in. Boy, was I wrong. I kicked more students out on my first day teaching in England than the last three years combined. Strategies that worked perfectly well in Australia and New Zealand were basically useless on English kids, like the pause and stare. This strategy is useful when students are chatting while you're teaching. In Australia, I'd stop teaching, making eye contact with a misbehaving student, waiting for them to notice, they look at me and say, oh, sorry, sir, then I'd resume teaching. That's the pause and stare. In New Zealand, I'd stop, stare, and the student would say, oh, sorry, sir, then I'd resume teaching. But in England, if I stop my teaching, stare at a student till they notice, if they do notice, they'll look back at me, get shocked and appalled that they're being accused of misbehaving and say, what, what are you looking at? I didn't even do nothing. Oh, my days. And then just leave the classroom. And the difference is blatant. I've taught in three schools in England. Between two of those schools, I got a job in the United Arab Emirates. And suddenly, all the disgusting behaviour I had to deal with each and every day in England just disappeared. Magic. Then I moved back to England to pursue a relationship with the love of my life. And just like that, all those behaviours that virtually didn't exist in Australia, New Zealand or Abu Dhabi just came flooding back. I am under the water. Please help me. The rudeness, the arrogance, the entitlement, the lying, the violence, the stealing. The fragility, the absolute lack of resilience, the inability to hold on to anything without immediately breaking or losing it. Now, I am in no way saying that no student in Australia, New Zealand, or the UAE is rude, disrespectful, arrogant, lies, or lacks resilience. No, those kids exist. But the sheer rate of them in other countries versus England is astonishing. In my experience, the rate for Australian kids showing this type of horrible behaviour was probably 15 out of 100 times. In New Zealand, it's probably 5 out of 100 times. In Abu Dhabi, you're looking at about 25 out of 100 times, but in England, it's closer to 85 out of 100 times. Now, honest and polite English people do exist, but for every well-behaved student who is polite and honest, I can show you 50 that aren't. It's the rate that's the problem. And this observation is actually mutual, believe it or not. My observations are based on me traveling the world and teaching many different races and noticing how enthusiastically worse English people are. On the flip side, when you see English people travel to other countries, their observation is the same as mine. It's unusual and weird to them how people can value their education, respect figures of authority, and strive to be the best they can be. 
To illustrate this, I'll be using a clip from World's Strictest Parents, where two English kids go to West India and get to go to school in Pune, India. And just listen to how they compare schools in England versus school in India. In India, education is far more important than most other westernized countries, such as England, for example. Many people drop out of education after the age of 16 with very little qualifications. Second of all is morals. India are big on their morals. Lastly, I'd like to talk about respect. In India, everyone is massive on respect. It's respect your family, respect your teachers, respect any sort of authority figures, elders, police, everything. In many westernized cultures, respect is completely diminished. And again, in Mombasa, Kenya, you see the same thing. What kind of boy is this? He's useless. I've never been to Britain, but I'm surprised, I'm shocked. If this is how they are, I'm sorry for Britain. They really appreciate school and schoolwork and sort of getting on with things out here. A lot of my mates just have like ambitions to become a footballer's wife. <laughs> it's not the same out here. They really like know what they want to be sort of thing and I don't know, they want to do it for good sort of reasons. It took me three years teaching in England and five years teaching outside of England to establish this bulletproof observation that it's only the English, that there is something very different about these people. The fact that I can teach in four countries and the moment I leave England, all this horrible behavior just disappears. And then I return to England and just like that, it's all back. The English have consistently proven themselves to be the nastiest, most horrible people I have ever dealt with. The top 10,000 rudest things ever said to me were by the English. I've been lied to the most by the English. They've stolen more of my things, ignored more of my instructions in the classroom, vandalized the most property, been the most racist, started the most fights, valued their education the least, respected their country and heritage the least, have caused me the most stress, and have been the most aggressive and violent people I have ever dealt with. For context, I'm 32 years old, so I've been alive for around 11,840 days. I moved to England in December 2019 until August 2021 when I moved to Asia and taught in the UAE. I returned to the UK in August 2022, and now it's May 2024. So in total, I've been in England for around 1,280 days, give or take. Meaning I've got around 10,640 days living outside of England versus 1,200 days living inside of England. In other words, I've spent 11% of my life in England at this point. And yet, I can say with absolute confidence that the rudest, most disrespectful and disgusting behaviours ever directed at me were all committed inside that 11% bracket by English people exclusively. Never had a single issue with an Indian, Nigerian, Afghan, Polish or Pakistani student being horrible in the three years I've taught in England. It's always been British people. Now, I have to be fair. I worked in three different schools in England. Two non-selective public schools where English pupils made the clear majority of the student population, probably 90 to 95%. And a fancy selective grammar school that was quite diverse, with about a quarter of students being from different races. The kids in the fancy grammar school were lovely, well-behaved, they tried their best, and they were very respectful. But... It was a fancy selective grammar school that collected the best kids in the area, so of course the best of the best of an area is going to be nice. I bet the best parts of North Korea are probably pretty nice. Additionally, I taught at this grammar school during the height of the pandemic, so there was no marking of books or Ofsted inspections at all, even exams were cancelled. So if you recall the two pie graphs I showed in episode 1, my time spent at this fancy selective grammar school fell under this practice and not this typical one you'd expect in England. And note, I kept in contact with some teachers at this fancy grammar school, and it has unfortunately returned to this typical practice once COVID restrictions were deployed. So I was extremely lucky. So given this grammar school had no active marking policy, no fear of Ofsted, an underrepresented English population, and a focus on actually teaching instead of marking and pleasing Ofsted, I'm confident in disqualifying my experience at this school and just focusing on the other two schools that had a marking policy, chronic Ofsted fears, and were made up of about 95% English white kids. This means that the 1,200 total days I spent in England can be amended to remove the roughly 330 days I spent at this fancy grammar school. The result leaves me with around 800 days of my entire life, about 6% of my time on earth, exposed to typical English people in the classroom. So, out of my 11,840 days of life, 99% of all the disrespectful, rude, low-tolerance and ignorant behaviour I have been subjected to has been inside these 800 days. Talk about potent. 
In my experience, dealing with English people has been 90% negative and 10% positive or neutral. So my wife, who is English, her family, our friends, well-behaved students, and members of the public that were polite and considerate, they all fit inside that 10%. Conversely, that means I would need to engage with thousands of honest, well-behaved, and polite English people just to reach zero and balance the scale. So when I say that the worst part of teaching in England are the English people, I mean it. I would gladly tolerate a twice as powerful Ofsted with triple the budget if the students weren't English, because at least they'd be kind, considerate, and respectful. And on that note, here is my disclaimer. In this video, I will generalize, like I just did, and speak in absolutes about English people for the sake of shorthand. But of course, not all English people will fall under these statements, but enough will for it to fall under pattern recognition. So it's not racism towards the English, but pattern recognition of the English. So before you accuse me of being racist against the English when I say things like, the English are disrespectful and rude, this is based on pattern recognition and not racism. Of course, not all English people will find out this category, but enough do. And the existence of a respectful and polite English person does not suddenly negate the observation that the English are disrespectful and rude. Just like Americans are fat is still a valid observation based on pattern recognition, even though these Americans exist. Also, when it comes to race, I am fair. Even though I believe that Australia is at least 500 billion times better than England, and that the best thing to come out of England is Australia, when I felt Australia was in the wrong, I made a three-part, two-and-a-half-hour documentary with over 150 sources exposing them. My observations don't discriminate. So I do not hate the English. My wife and many of my friends are English. I respect England's laws, celebrate English heritage, I stood in line to lay flowers for the late Queen Elizabeth, and I celebrated the coronation of the king. I have peacefully assimilated into the culture, with the exception that I'm not into heavy drinking culture, and I couldn't care less about football or soccer. I hope they all lose. Basically, I'm not anti-English. I am anti-reprehensible behaviour, and in my experience, reprehensible behaviour is, regrettably, quintessentially British behaviour. If you are the exception and are genuinely polite to the point other people compliment your manners and etiquette, hooray! You love your country and carry its image with grace. But make no mistake, you are the minority, and by the end of this video we will likely be on the same page. Now, for me to fairly argue that teaching English people is the most traumatizing part of teaching in England, far more so than Ofsted, I'll need to somehow find a resource that isn't anecdotal. Otherwise, everything I'm saying can be distributed to me teaching in rough areas or poor timing. In order to prove that the English are just innately a disrespectful and violent people, as a workable and practical profile of the English, I'll need to find a resource that meets a series of specific criteria. It'll need to capture candid behaviour with natural and typical reactions, so nothing staged or extreme. A lot of people seem to blame COVID and Brexit for the decades of poor behaviour in English schools, so it'll need to be pre-COVID and pre-Brexit so anything before 2020. To back up my claims this behaviour is typical of the English, this source would need to be collected from several schools across the entire country. Otherwise, I'll be making one school in one area the mouthpiece of English behaviour. And it would need to be English majority schools, at least 80 to 90% white British. Otherwise, I'll be showing like Portuguese students misbehaving and then telling you, look how English people behave. That's not fair. Thankfully, such a gold mine exists. It's a show called Educating. Educating is a British documentary reality television program. It uses a fly-on-the-wall format to show the everyday lives of staffs and pupils of secondary schools all over the UK. So, candid and natural? Check. And all episodes are before 2020. While Greater Manchester 2 claimed to be 2020, it was recorded in 2018 and only released in 2020, after the school was placed into special measures by Ofsted in 2018 following reports of headmaster Drew Povery off-rolling students. Channel 4 later confirmed that the episodes would not be aired in light of the findings. In 2020, it was revealed that Channel 4 would air the unaired episodes. So, pre-2020? Check. It also covers five schools across five counties and in two countries, England and Wales. So, fair and large sample? And white British majority? Check. You'll see. Please note that every episode from this series can be found for free on a YouTube channel called Our Stories. For the love of God, before you decide to move to the UK to teach, please watch these episodes first. It'll give you more context behind the clips I'm showing as well, but you need to see these episodes. 
I'll leave them in the description. Because if you are not convinced that teaching in England is a colossal mistake, watching every episode from this series will absolutely confirm it to you. Everything and more of what I'm about to tell you can be seen plain as day within these episodes. Here's the crazy part. This series was filmed between 2011 to 2018, so between 13 to 5 years ago. If you ask any teacher who has been teaching in England for up to 13 years, has the behaviour gotten better or worse since 2011, they'll almost definitely tell you that it has gotten much worse since 2011. Even Ofsted claims that disruptive behaviour in English schools worse since COVID says ongoing head. Behaviour in schools in England has deteriorated since the pandemic, with pupils refusing to comply with rules, talking back to teachers and walking out of class mid-lesson, the head of Ofsted says. Suspensions for physical assault, threatening behaviour and verbal abuse have increased, with even primary school children being defiant and refusing to follow simple classroom instructions, such as to get out their books. In some cases, children are turning up to school for registration, but, despite being on the premises, failing to attend any lessons. The outgoing Chief Inspector of Schools in England, Amanda Spielman, said in an exclusive interview with The Guardian. So as I show you clips from this show, remind yourself while watching. You are looking at England at its best in these clips. It is much worse now. Which is why teacher vacancies in England, 93% higher than pre-pandemic study fines. You've been warned. Please heed my warning. Don't you then go and jump headfirst into it without researching it first. There is a very good reason why teachers in England are fleeing the profession like their life depends on it. Now, with all that said, let's start with easily the most dominant trait I think English people possess, especially compared to other races, 